In the next few minutes, I'm going to explain the Python keyword super. Let's jump straight to an example. Here we have a base class which prints base.init, and we have a child class, child1, which inherits directly from base. On instantiation of this child class, we're directly calling a method from the base class. In addition, we print child1.dunderInit. Let's create an instance of child1 to see what happens. We see the behavior that we expect. We call the dunderInit method of the base class, and that prints base.dunderInit. We then printed child1.dunderInit. No surprises there. The problem arises when multiple inheritance is used. We've added a second child class, almost identical to the first. It too is representing a case where there needs to be some form of initialization from the parent class. Child3 has both child1 and 2 as its parents. It inherits from both. In its dunder init method, it calls initialization from child1 and 2, and then it prints child3.dunder init. As we can see, after creating an instance of child3, the problem is that base.dunderInit has been called twice. This isn't a problem here, apart from looking unsightly, but this could cause lots of problems for you in your code, unless you practice the utmost diligence, and even then, it could bite you. On the other hand, when we change this to super, we call super, with an added bonus that we don't need to pass in the instance as an argument, it now works perfectly. For every class that you define, there's a method resolution order that Python computes. It's essentially all the base classes in a linear order. The MRO, the method resolution order, is calculated using a technique known as C3 linearization, which is a merge sort of the MROs from the parent classes subject to three constraints. One, child classes get checked before parents. Two, multiple parents get checked in the order listed. And three, if there are two valid choices for the next class, the one from the first parent is chosen. When Python sees super, it continues its search starting with the next class on the MRO. As long as every redefined method consistently uses super and only calls it once, the entire MRO list will be worked through and each method will only be called once. That's why in our altered example, base is only called once. Also, base is followed by child2 and then child1. As you can see, that's because the MRO has from left to right child3, child1, and then child2 finally followed by base and object. So child3 is last to be called, and it's the leftmost on the MRO list. So base being rightmost, ignoring object, the base under in it is called first. What's sometimes difficult to grasp at first is that super doesn't necessarily go to the direct parent of a class next in the MRO. You can even use it in a class with no direct parent at all, as we'll see in our next example. Here we have a somewhat deficient adder method in both a 10 class and a 100 class. Each adder method takes in an arbitrary number of positional arguments and then prints the sum of those arguments plus 10 in class 10 and plus 100 in class 100. What's more, class 10 has a super call after the print statement. The experiment class inherits from class 10 and class 100. We create an instance of experiment and then we call inherited method adder passing in arguments 1, 2, and 3. What's surprising about the result is that after giving us our result 16, so class 10's adder was used, the super call in class 10's adder ended up calling 100's adder. We didn't pass any arguments to 100's adder, we got the result 100, 0 plus 100. Class 10 and 100 aren't linked 
their only connection is that the experiment class inherits from both of them. Class 10 was able to call class 100's adder, but we now know why this was the case. We can have a look at the method resolution order. So because super might end up invoking a method that you're not expecting at all, it's prudent to exercise extreme caution when using multiple inheritance, if you choose to at all.